What up, disc golfers? Today we are building a winter bag. It's key to make sure that you only have what you need with you in the winter and you make sure you're not throwing anything you're gonna lose. When the snow gets deep, you've gotta be able to pick those colors out. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm doing this winter is I'm switching to the backpack. I love my Zuka cart, but it just does not make sense to pull that thing around in all kinds of snow. And I'm certainly not gonna put skis on it. So I'll leave that for some real troopers, but I'm switching to a grip bag. I've had it for a while and it makes a great winter bag. It holds just a few less discs than I'm able to carry my cart because I have a putter pouch. But for me, I think that's a good thing. I start working on different things over the winter. So the first thing I know about my winter bag is I'm putting with the same thing. These are my sea otters. I've been putting with these for a while now and I really like them. These pink ones are really understable now. I've got the sea otter stamp on here, the classic, and I just picked up a pair of these purple guys at the Wild Challenge. I was able to play this a little while ago and these, I don't know if it's the run or just the new plastic, it is much more overstable much more of a straight to fade disc, whereas these turn over. So I'm really looking to work these into the bag as a putter. These will get beat in a little bit as I throw them. And then eventually I'll start putting with these and these will slide into the bag. So as far as winter goes, I'm putting with these. So let's build our way up. We know what the putting putters are. So let's grab a couple throwing putters. For me, this means like a one speed to three speed disc. I think for the winter, I'll probably just want a pair. I'll want an overstable approach disc and I'll want a straighter slash turnover approach disc. I don't typically find myself needing a really understable approach disc because I'm usually not going that far. So if I need to move right, I can use it. I can use angle to move right if I need to. So let's start with that understable putter. Just about every disc I own is behind me. And so we're gonna go through these and figure out what I'm putting in my bag this winter. For an understable putter, I'm looking between these two. I've got a old school AVR with the two rings underneath. This I wiped a long time ago. I got this when I was putting with AVRs and just had a stack of them. Uh, I think this is gonna be fairly understable because it's DX, although it could hold its integrity pretty well. I like that it's base plastic that usually makes for a good turnover disc, but in the winter DX, especially if you're throwing in a wooded course and you're hitting a lot of trees, that's risky. You might break it. I think instead what I'll go with is this 2021 tour series Luna. I had this in the bag for a long time and so it's nice and understable, but I will be able to trust this if I want to put it on a soft hyzer line. So if I need to hook around a corner, I can still trust this. It's not really, really flippy. So I think a straight thrower is exactly what I want. This is kind of far for a putter though. Lunas fly really far versus a lot of the putters I'm familiar with. I don't know what it is. If it's just that world champion six time juice. I don't know if it's just the McBeast power or what. But for me, Luna seemed to go a little bit farther than my other putters. So I think for the overstable one, I'm gonna wanna throw something that's not quite so glidey. For my overstable, I'm gonna be throwing this Cole Rodolin Sea Otter. This is a special run of the Sea Otter for Cole, one of Wild Disc's first sponsored players. And this thing is crazy overstable. It's in their lava plastic. And so it's got this really nice shimmery look to it. I really like the feel of a sea otter in my hand. I, I putt with them, and so it's comfortable for me. And this one is really overstable. Another thing that I like about the sea otter as an approach disc is that it's not very glidey. It doesn't want to go very far. It's actually a two-speed putter and not a three-speed putter. So I'm going to be putting this Cole Rodolin sea otter in my bag as my overstable approach disc. I'm going to be bagging an uplink as my understable mid-range. Now, it's still fall here in New York, so this is a bit of a risky move with the orange in the bag, but I think with the rim, I should be able to see it well enough. I really hope I don't lose it because I've been really liking this so far. It's really understable, but unlike a lot of the other understable mid-ranges, it's a five speed, and so it should carry similar to the buzzes I'm used to throwing in my summer bag. For my straight mid-range shots, I'm gonna be throwing this ESP Buzz. The Buzz is a classic for your straight mid-range shots. If you don't have a Buzz in your bag, then you're definitely missing out. These are a classic. I love the stamp, the color's fun. I gotta make sure I don't throw this when it's too dark out. For my overstable mid-range, I'm gonna be throwing a Buzz OS. This is a classic in my bag, and I just happen to have this one in blue. It should be easy to see through the fall, and I can switch it to an orange one once fall is over. 
For my understable fairway driver, I'm gonna throw this Leopard. This Leopard is in star plastic, so right now it's fairly overstable, but I think this should fly well for me as an understable fairway disc because it's a six speed. So if I throw it like I'm comfortable throwing my normal fairway drivers, most of the time I bag seven speed discs, then this is gonna be comfortable. I think it'll fly understable like its numbers say. It's a minus two one. So if I throw it faster than six, it might lose that one fade a little bit or it might turn a little harder. For my straight to fade, I'm gonna be throwing a Halo Leopard 3. I've been bagging versions of this Halo Leopard 3 for a while now. I love this disc. Owen Scoggins is super cool. She's one of the baddest women in the sport. And this disc also lights up like crazy when I'm using my UV light. So it's gonna be a huge help if I'm looking for it in the dark. For an overstable fairway driver, I'm gonna be throwing the Triple X. This is not a common disc and it's actually out of production now, but I've been bagging one for a long time and I've got a few backups here in the rack. This is the one I could find most easily in the fall and winter. So it's going in the bag. It's actually got a crazy puddle top to it. So this one doesn't usually go in the bag until I lose the ability to see the other ones. I've got white and orange as well. So time to bring in the green. Before we move on to the nine speeds, I love this Explorer and I'm gonna put it in the bag I just need to find a place for it. I haven't bagged this in a long time, but I threw it recently and it was beautiful. So it's sneaking a place. For my understable nine speed, we're going back to wild discs. This is a Hyena. It's a minus two, two control driver. And I love these things. I got as many as I could when I went to the wild challenge last weekend. And I'm going to hold on to as many as I can. I'm putting the blue in the bag because I don't want to lose it. The orange is staying on the shelf until falls over. Next up in a straight to fade nine speed, the Undertaker. This is a Z Undertaker with a lot of dome on it. So I think it's going to hold that over stability as long as I need it to. Undertakers for the most part are very straight fairway, but with this dome and this plastic, I know it's going to be reliably overstable. Next up staying in from the summer bag is the Scepter. This disc is great for me. It flies like my 2021 Sexton Firebird did. A little more understable than your typical Firebird, meaning it'll hold that straight line before beginning to hyzer out. This kind of disc you always want to fade at the end. You need that hyzer finish, but it's gonna be reliably straight in the middle of the flight. For my understable distance driver, I'm gonna bag the Tenacity. I got this in my Gyropalooza box and it's supposed to be pretty understable. I've never thrown a Tenacity before, so I don't know if it's gonna stay in the bag long term, but if it flies true to its numbers, then it should be a great disc for some standstill distance shots. For me, this disc is a standby, the Raider. I always have one of these in my bag. Usually I have two or three. This one's in lucid plastic, so it's nice and overstable. It's gonna hold straight if I throw it full power, make sure to dump at the end. And if I want to, I can really shape it by backing down on the power a little bit. For my most overstable fastest disc, I'm bagging a Castaplast Rask. It's got this really interesting rim on the underside here. And the reason I got this initially is because I'm a Boston Bruins fan. So the Rask really spoke to me. Bruins fans know what's up. And I actually found that it felt comfortable in my hand. It doesn't seem like it should be comfortable because of the weird inside rim, but my hands aren't that big. And so my fingers fit into it nicely for the forehand. I'm able to fit one finger in like this. And with the backhand, I can fit all three of my fingers in before I curl my pinky. So I feel comfortable holding this weird disc and it's really overstable. It's technically a 14 speed. And what that means for me is that it's going to get to the end of the flight pretty quickly and then dump really hard. So I can shape it with a hyzer if I want to, but if I put this on a flex line, the end of the flight is gonna happen really quickly. I also like to carry with me a couple of utility discs that don't really fit into my normal slots. And so what I'm gonna bring with me are a couple of one speeds where I can throw quite hard, but still penetrate really straight through the woods. A lot of the places I play in the winter are shorter courses that are more technical. And so I really enjoy throwing a disc that I can point and shoot and then sit. Bird gang, putting a bird in the bag. Always love this disc. 
not only is it a great reliable straight backhand shot, but I find it really shapeable when I put it on a forehand. For maximum over stability and minimum glide, Saki Bomb Slammer. Some people are gonna like the feel of this disc in their hand. Some people are going to hate it. I believe the top is a slammer mold and the bottom is a heart mold. It's basically a super deep slammer or a harp with a thumb track. But regardless, it's really flat, has almost no glide, and is incredibly overstable. It's really great for utility shots. I can put this on a really steep forehand and still expect it to fight out at the end. So that's my winner bag. I'm excited to get to playing this winner. Um, a lot of these discs are new to me, and so I'm going to have a ton of fun throwing them. I'll make sure to tell you what I think, and I hope, because of my careful color choices, I'm not going to lose them. Thanks for watching. 